So you already got the uh, the sneak peek. Uh, I've got Ravi next to me, all the way from Johannesburg. He came down for the weekend. Um, uh, Ravi, how are you doing, first and foremost? I mean, we did see each other last night. We went to the rugby. Um, so it's good to see him here sitting next to me doing a show together. So I'm excited about this one. Ravi, what's up? How are you doing? How's it been? What's your life been like in Cape Town? What, do, what were you doing here in the first place? First, we tell well, our viewers. Well, firstly, thank you very much for having me live on the show, live as in like in the studio where the magic happens. Uh, Kiri Fanatics Magazine. If you haven't done so as yet, please like, subscribe, and uh, please interact with us as we have the live chat on uh, this evening. I'm actually here for 40th birthday. And uh, as you know, you came with us to the rugby last night. It's always good to see the Stormers win uh, for a change, but it looks like we are in the final four. And uh, wishing the Stormers the very best. Hopefully we can win this whole competition our second year in the URC, as it were. Yeah. I mean, it was nice to be at a stadium again. Yes. 50, okay, it was only 50% not full. Yeah. But it was still enjoyable for me. Um, I really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot for that, Ravi. Um, we had a lot of fun watching the game. I mean, for me, I haven't been in touch with rugby as much as I used to be in the past. So there was a lot of new players on display. I particularly like the number seven. Uh, it really stood out to me. Um, I'm a big fan now. So I'm going to be watching the Storms. I'm probably going to go to the semi final as well, um, looking at it, because it was a lot of fun. Um, what else did you do in Cape Town so far? I know we're going to be having some traditional Cape Town food tonight. Um, but yeah. what do you? What have you been doing so far? And since you were since you were young, pretty much eating. But uh, <laughs> I'm glad we'll be eating some more this evening. But uh, no, so it's been pretty much uh, reacquainting with a lot of friends because uh, I used to live in Cape Town before, and uh, always good to connect with everyone, especially around sport. Discussing our topics like cricket and rugby. In fact, you left a huge Easter egg yesterday. You didn't say who was sitting behind us uh, when we were watching cricket. So, sorry, rugby yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, Rory Kleinfeld was there at the stadium. It was interesting to see. Hi, Rory. <laughs> to chat to us a bit. It was good to see him and chat to him a little bit after the game as well. Um, so, it was nice to see him there. I think there were quite a few celebrities actually in the on celebrities or well-known um, people, yeah. sportsmen in the, mm. in the crowd. I didn't. I saw a lot after the game, and didn't get to actually speak to any of them, but just saw them in distance. I mean, I did a double walk. We we did a triple walk yesterday. We probably walked the entire stadium <laughs> twice <laughs> before we got yeah, to. We had to get rid of all of that excess food you know, <laughs> since we arrived here. Yeah, yeah but I mean, Uncle Ravi is back. Lorenzo says, "Welcome to the show, Ravi." Hi, Lorenzo. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Hi, Lorenzo. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's good to see you. Yeah, I mean, comparing when you ever you come back home again. Because not a lot of people know that you actually spent the majority of your years here in Cape Town before you moved to Joburg. Um, but when you compare the two, when you come back, do you, do you always miss it? Do you, do you realize how much you miss it? I miss it. The, the air is so much cleaner. Uh, <laughs> and it's nice to see roads without potholes in it for a change. Uh, but yeah, no, it's always good to be back home. Always good to connect with all friends and family mm -hmm. uh, when you're down. And yeah, Cape Town's always been very hospitable and welcoming for us. Yeah. Well, guys, it's another podcast show. We're not going to talk cricket. So I think let's let's do that. Let's chat cricket. I decided to go with a topic about Temba Bavuma right now because mm -hmm. uh, I, I posted something recently on, on our Facebook page, which I'm going to show you guys as well. Um, I'm just going to blow it up for you guys and show you on the actual screen to show you what we did and what article was put out. But it was based on particularly on the... Um, Bavuma press conference, which you guys saw. Now, we did the a reaction to the first press conference, um, and that was the departure press conference, and then they did another one with Temba, the arrival, on arrival in India. So, there was a an article that was written from the press conference by Angama, mm -hmm. and I think it's it's perfect for me to, to show you guys what was said in the comment section, because the question was, and the question was asked to Bavuma as well, where he thinks he will bat for the Proteas. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of us have been speaking about the opening position being the position that he should be batting. I'm going to be sharing it with you guys now to show you what some of the comments said um, when it came to Bavuma. Now, it's, it's been crazy. It's, uh, it's 145 comments, as you can see, on this particular post. Um, the story has gone completely crazy on, on Facebook. I mean, as you see, it's reached 35,000 people already. But... Um, <laughs> Someone says Bavuma should bat at number 15. Mm -hmm, um, and obviously people laughed and went on it. You can see the amount of friction he gets on Twitter and on, on social media. 
um, a lot of people laughing and going on. Um, there have been people as well saying he can't bat anywhere else but as opener. And people, um, Kobus van Jans van Rensburg, who has been on the channel before, or has been in the live chat before. Um, we've got Derek um, Watling saying, Tembe is a fantastic batsman, but like Algo Williamson, Root isn't a T20 player and can proudly say he is a test batsman. So that's another opinion. Um, you can see that a lot of people are also saying that and, and they're giving, obviously, stats to back it up. Then you've got over here um, someone saying that the cock should open with Markram. Here you've got someone saying it should be Riza Hendricks and Bavuma at five. So we are seeing a massive, massive split between the fan bases about this topic, Ravi. And mm -hmm. I thought that this will probably be the perfect time for us to discuss this. Um, because, I'm, I mean, I know you have always spoken about Bavuma as well. In a different light, you see him to, to many other people. So let's just start with that. Let's start with the position that he should bat. I mean, me personally, I, I believe that Temba should bat at, at, as an opener. I think him and Quentin de Kock, I think he can, his style of play, his calmness at the crease can really give the cock the freedom, I think, at the other end to play his game. Mm -hmm. I don't think he will feel as much pressure being um, at the other end if he has his captain on the other side. Yeah. Like, I think he's, he really benefited from the likes of having a calm head like uh, like um, Ashim Amla in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that will really suit him. We were speaking about, um, obviously, we were talking about... Um, Faf in the past, we're always talking about Faf maybe being a good partner for him. Mm -hmm. I do think that Tempo of Uma's game can be similar to Faf. I'm not saying it's identical, yeah. but they, but it can be similar the way they build an innings. Now, I'm hoping that Pavuma can do that more often, of course. Mm -hmm. But what's your 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 thought on Pavuma? Because we can't not select him in the team. He'd be, being the captain, we know he's going to be selected. So it's pointless us going on these crazy runs and saying like oh no he's not going to get selected into the team he of shouldn't be he's selected like, we must yeah. drop him we must yeah. bat five all these crazy things yeah. rather than fit him into the best position that he can possibly play so what's what's your um, thought on that yeah it's a tough one because uh, we've got a situation where both uh, Riza and Markram also in sublime form at the moment Riza had an insane series uh, in Zimbabwe recently playing for the A team and as well as uh Markram is definitely doing relatively well for, for the Hydro, Sunrise Hyderabad as well. So it's a tough one, but uh, I know for certain that you can't, it's pointless to play Babuma if he's not going to bat in the top four for the very least. It may make sense to have a cooler head batting with the cock because you find that Quinn actually plays much better with a stable person on the other end. Uh, so that, that person can actually bat freely. But when the cock is under significant pressure, where the first three are skittled, uh, you see a different kind of the cock out there. So I think what you're trying to get to is that uh, Pavuma can potentially play a complementary role mm -hmm. in a situation like that, which which I would firmly agree with. And I think uh, that also plays as a very good, healthy segue for David Biller to potentially go up to order as well. But I think uh, his recent form, his recent run uh, in the IPL certainly just high place in the team as well. Yeah, it gives us an opportunity to maybe stack that middle order, mm. like really with attacking black batters. Because I mean, you got then Aiden, Rassi, and mm. David, or or Aiden, David, Rassi, whatever you mm. want to to put it, and then you can have a power hit at six, mm -hmm. pushing Bavuma further up is actually better for the team in my opinion. Because yeah. you, you kind of, if you are worried about the strike rate, you kind of get that out of the way in the power play because exactly. you'll, you'll most likely find the yeah. gaps in power plays. And the games are won and lost in the power play, in my opinion. First six overs, absolutely critical. If you send a substandard uh, batting order to to try and get an aggressive run rate going, uh, it's definitely going to uh, play against him in the long run. So they have to get as aggressive a lineup. Sure, uh, we're saying the um, Bavuma is playing almost like a rotational role in manner of speaking. Sorry about that. It's a very popular in Cape Town. Uh, <laughs> uh, but um, in, in the grand scheme of things, you would want um, as aggressive a batting order as possible just to take advantage of the first six overs at least. Mm. You know what I'll say, Ravi, I think when I'm looking at it, is is not only because more, more likely you're going to see a situation where the batter isn't having an easy time at the other end. You know, you're not always going to have this part, mm. perfect partnership to open the batting. So in that cases, I think that's when South Africa struggle the most is when Quentin de Kock almost looks um, like 
it's almost like he gives up in certain cases. You know, he throws it and it looks like then we say he throws his wicket away because he kind of gets like caught at the crease. Yeah. And then he like he just goes for a shot that he shouldn't, and then he goes out early, and then South Africa's in massive trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Now he often gets a lifeline before he to that gets to that point. He hardly mm-hmm. ever actually goes for like first ball ducks in cricket. I've hardly ever seen that happen yeah. actually. This it's happened in the I have ever actually seen that. If the um, Quinton making struggling a bit, you'll say he can easily just shout at the other end and demand it because he's the captain. Mm-hmm. Other than if he has a a younger, more attacking batter at the, at the one end, yeah. that you're going to stifle one of them with Quinton the Cox free flowing style type of nature. Mm-hmm. So that's my concern: is that you don't get the best out of both openers. Mm-hmm. Quinton the Cox. For me, is a type of opener that that fires alone. It, it's ve- like I haven't necessarily seen a lot of people necess- um, team up with him to the degree, unless they are of a slower type of batter. Now we know we're about Rohit Sharma and him, and that's I feel is an exception to the rule because when he was at the Blitz with Yanaman, um, we didn't see these opening partnerships that we expected. That yeah. I thought mm-hmm. we were going to see a lot of hundred run partnerships mm-hmm. or. Um, 60 to 70, 80 run partnerships mm-hmm. um, w- w- before the 10th over comes, mm-hmm. before halfway through the match, because that's, I mean, that's very low. You would want to see it about 120 around by the yeah. time you get halfway. Most people would aim for that. But in T20 cricket, we've seen, particularly in the IPL, people are getting massive scores even when they're scoring under 100 in the first yeah. 10 overs. So you don't know. But if you have a player like Quentin Lukaku at the crease, anything's possible. Mm-hmm. But I do feel. That right at this moment, I don't think maybe that a younger opening batter would be the right decision with Quentin the Cock up front. I yeah. just feel a little bit uncertain over there because I feel that if if because the most likely the youngster will be struggling in a big on a big stage like the World Cup, for example. Yeah. So my my mindset is maybe for the future, maybe after this World T Twenty World Cup, we can start planning for the next for the next person to take over. That's so okay. then we can maybe think about leaving Pavuma out and maybe letting him focus on one day cricket for the 2023 World Cup, which is probably going to be his last captain's stint. So my my thought process would be then we can, but right now I think because you're going to pick Pavuma, I can only see him at, as an opener. Now, a lot of people have maybe said 3-2. Do you see him possibly at 3? Then if he does, who would bats open with, with Quinton? <laughs> Well, that, that's a uh, catch ready to eh? Um Yeah, I told you. So with Babuma, you can only, it's pointless batting him lower than four if you are going to go with that strategy. I mean, Yanaman Malanda seems to be the obvious choice, but I, I agree. I think and he's, and a, he's not a youngster anymore. He's not say. a youngster. No, he's like, what, he's about 26 now? 25? Yeah. yeah. But uh, you're right. They haven't really clicked um, between the cock and Yanaman uh, to really say that this is the opening pair that's really going to take us through. Uh, neither has uh, Markram nor uh, Dukak is a combination either. And the other thing is that uh, Markram is actually, if you watch the IPL recently, he's done quite well with the latter overs, finding boundaries mm. in fielding situations that didn't really allow for it. So you may want to keep him uh, within the top five situation as opposed to opening with Markram and him going out in the first six overs. So do you agree with this? Um, it's been popping up. Pabuma's um, playing only as a captain. He's very good batsman for Test and ODI, but he's weak link in the T20 team. Do you agree with that? Because I know that no. there was a massive T20 game that I always talk about, that final for the Lions where Pabuma hit a century to win the game. Mm-hmm. He has it in him. He definitely has it with him. I, I think he's, uh, there, there definitely needs to be a radar in terms of said weak spots in the team or other spotlights if you will i think it's a better term to use uh i would actually throw into question rassi van der Dissen. is he is he a starting lineup is he is he belong in the starting lineup for the lack of a better term um is it Bovuma the guy that should be uh the one that's being focused on because uh what has rassi done recently in the in the last uh, couple of t20 matches mm. I mean, had a decent world cup i would say Oh, it's definitely World Cup, but I mean, like, if you look at domestically and you look at uh, his IPL run as well with Rajasthan. Yeah, he doesn't get selected even in Rajasthan. <laughs> he doesn't even get an opportunity in Rajasthan. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. Yeah, so, like, I don't know, man. Like, a lot of people have even suggested maybe Rasi open. And I, I could see it. Mm-hmm. I could see it with this way he sets up an innings. But I'm worried about that that new ball. 
because he also takes a couple of balls to get, to get himself in. in. Where I do think Pavuma can hit in a power play from ball one. He's shown signs of it. I just think he hasn't been given enough opportunities as Quentin de Kock's partner in the T20 arena. They started building momentum when Quentin was still captain. Mm -hmm. They were starting to build momentum and in matches. And then Bavuma got injured and he and he didn't have not he never had another opportunity to actually open the batting again with Quentin since then. Mm -hmm. He's been moving all around and deciding on where he's gonna bat. But the fact that this question has been asked and it was in the press conference just proves that this is the right question to ask people because there is obviously a divide. I showed you the comments on Facebook on the on the on the mm -hmm. on the story as on, on that particular article that we put out, and you can see how much it's divided. It's it's, co it's caused a lot of com for conversation on our platform and oh, our community. Well. <laughs> and I mean, you can see even here in the live chat, um, Lorenzo says. RVD was our best batsman at no, the World he Cup. He was him and he, I think definitely him and Aiden can yeah. can share that um that too. No way Tempa Bavuta is Bavuma is better than RVD in twenty twenty three or ODIs. So it's uh, but how long was the World Cup? <laughs> World Cup was last year. Yeah, yeah but I, I, I still wouldn't compare the two batters because mm -hmm. I think Temba Bavuma is, is, is a different player to, to, to Rassi, I feel. Mm -hmm. They've, they've complemented each other really nicely in the Lions team mm -hmm. because of the two different uh, opposite they are within the same mentality. Mm -hmm. So we just need to find that that balance. Um, I, I just believe that the opening partnership right now going into a World Cup needs to be about going to the car. Yeah, I think well, yeah, for me personally, is how do we get mm -hmm. the best out of him consistently in the World Cup? Because we haven't managed to do that in World Cups past. Yeah. Quentin is not a good World Cup player. He's struggled in World Cup competitions. So we really need him to come to the fold because he's the one that we're hoping that will bat to at least minimum 10 overs every match. Like, I at least want to see him go to at least 10 overs every match. Yeah. Like, and we've seen Quentin. Um, he had a fantastic season with uh, with luck now. Sorry. I always get the, <laughs> I always get the new franchise names wrong. Uh, but they had one fantastic partnership where they scored. I think 205 runs uh, as an opening step. And uh, the cock was like, was, yeah, you see like at, a beach ball. That's a very good example. Yeah. Because look at the two contrasting ways they played. Now, yeah. KRL was also known for having mm -hmm. Quentin the cock like innings, you could say, batting, till, scoring hundreds in AFLs, which he's done, he's done before. But the thing that was amazing about it for me is that KL actually sat back that match and he got criticized for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But is the, do you think that that's the case? Like, how many times have you actually seen two batters fire and score at a strike rate of 140, 150, both openers? I've never seen that. I normally expect it to either, you know, be six down after the first 11 uh, with 120 on the board. But uh, in this particular instance, these guys weren't missing a beat at all. And I'm surprised people are saying that KL held back because I thought he was quite aggressive in the innings of his own as well. Mm. Uh, but the cock was just seriously at another level. And that, that's kind of the cock we need to see in World Cup. So I agree. Mm -hmm. I would like to know in the comment section which innings is you guys can think of where you saw um, both openers striking at about 150, 160. Um, like that's what we're obviously looking for in T20 cricket. Um, but it will be interesting to see what you guys come up with. Um, let's see some of the, the the comments in the live chat over here, what you guys are saying. Um, interesting to see. Without doubt, no, number three should have a higher strike rate than Bavuma's strike rate. And another comment that Bavuma is not a T20 player. He's too slow for this fast format. And his top ball percentage is higher. It put pressure on the other batters because it can break momentum of scoring. Now, I think that Temba Bavuma has... Moy in his arsenal to change that with regards to that dot ball percentages. Because I'm also talking, that is very important in T20 cricket. Dot balls put a hell of a lot of pressure on batters. We see how batters can get stifled and strang, um, strangled at the crease when they are facing dot balls and missing deliveries and not getting um, runs on the board. And I do feel that Pavuma is the type of person that can tap and go. Mm. It's a good runner between the wickets. Um, so if that, but I feel that he does need to build that partnership and that connection with and understanding with Quentin because running between the wickets is a lot about trust. Yeah. <laughs> a hell of a lot about trust. And you need to understand your partner. Oh, totally. No, you need to be coordinated. And I, I can't, I'm sure uh, 
the running between the wickets has been something that's been debated for a while in the South African camp as well. Mm -hmm. Pavuma, the clock should open, did well in the 2019 T20 T20s opening. And I agree. And, and like I said earlier on, is that we didn't get to see it again more often after Pavuma got injured. So yeah. it was a little bit unfortunate from that yeah. perspective that we didn't get to see them perform on a regular basis at that level. Um, I would like to see that more. And I think that Temba should put up his hand and say, you know what, I'm captain. I'm going to take responsibility here. Let me open up the batting. Because if he does lose his wicket, then we then then we still Reserve. okay. I feel yeah. we still have because if you guys are saying that he's as crap or shit as he is, like you're saying he is, then obviously why would it matter if you lose his wicket? Mm -hmm. exactly. exactly. So um, that's that's the thing that we need to look at when we when, we, when we're saying when we we're looking at those batters because then we've got Rassi coming in, then you can have Rassi at three, and then you can have a versatile bottom order, but you can't have a versatile order if you still have a woman coming in. Then in that case. As his chef was comment there, sorry. <laughs> this is like a captain on no, so so cool. <laughs> There's no, no other option. He knows I'm an MCU fan. Bro. Yeah, they both are. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Massive. Talk about, I'm surprised we haven't even started speaking about that yet, but talk about the Brevis <laughs> guy. Oh, well, why did they never go crazy about Al Bosman, the first essay that scored in 100 in T20 game against England? So don't even think about discussing him on carte blanche. Okay. Bosman is an awesome player. Let's get that out of the way. And he should have had a better run in the 2007 50 over World Cup. We, we have to admit, our players of color need to be treated better mm -hmm. in this. In this, We need to protect them better at domestic level. I think it starts actually at school level. Mm -hmm. I mean, that um, you can you can easily get an inferior comp uh, complex um, young mm -hmm. if, if you're not getting fair opportunities at school level. And I think that there's not a lot of fair opportunities, particularly in cricket in school level. Um, I think that needs to be better. I think we need to get more players in from the township into into school, good good quality schools. And people from from different communities can go into good schools because that's where they get the opportunities to play. And like I said before, and I repeat the stat, and if you Google it, you can see out of 6,000 high schools in South Africa, only 58, I think, around about 58, 50 plus, just but under 60. So 58, I think it is around about of high schools that have produced proteas yeah out of six thousand, that's ridiculous so we need There's to do problem. something better and, and if we look at the numbers we have to see how much of them are players of color we can probably count them on on on, on two pairs of hands the amount of players of color that have come through so it's, it's going to be interesting to see um what they do with regards to improving transformation in this country because it really needs to improve um i would like to see temba Proves everyone wrong, like Hashim Amla did in the white ball cricket while started opening in the innings for the Proteus. That's a good point. Yeah, That's because, I mean, point. you can't judge Temba as an open if you haven't seen him open enough yet. Like, like you can't base how he bats at three or four and take that because he's coming into situations maybe in a different, when, when they need different a different role from him. So, exactly. I mean, how do you see Temba complimenting Quentin at, 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 the, at its best. What does Temba need to do, do you think? Is it is it more finding finding runs too in the power play where he's finding the boundary, or is it more about finding quick singles to keep Quentin de Kock on strike in the power play? I think it's exactly that, the latter, just to give Quentin de Kock as much strike as possible. But uh, Bavuma, when he has opened, has been one that has played a few flashy shots as well, getting it over the circle and at least to the boundary. I know he favours the square cut quite a bit. So that's something that uh, Bavuma can also lend a hand to, also play the semi-aggressive role. But I think the priority will be to try and get Dukaku on strike as much as possible. And should Dukaku go out, uh, you know, within the first over to Bavuma can take that mantle further uh, within the power play. Mm -hmm. um, so let's continue this. I know, and I know it's, <laughs> it's causing a lot of debate. <laughs> Hari, I'd love to come on the show about transformation. I'd be super busy, but this is a topic I'd love to shed some light on. Yes, we will do an entire show. I just need to set it up properly and have the right people on the show with us to, to discuss the topic. I would like to get some guys that have seen it, that have really witnessed it properly, have covered it as journalists, etc., or mm -hmm. have experienced it personally. Um, 
Let's move on over here. There's not hatred towards Temba Bavuma, and we are not saying he's not a good player because he definitely is. But T20 cricket has evolved massively, and in my opinion, Temba hasn't hit the, the mold. He cannot be compared with KL Raul. No, fair point. It's a fair point. Mm. Holly does Rousseau have a future in South African colors as we haven't seen him called up unlike Wayne by now. You see, um, where do you blame? I don't know what the blame. I don't know what the reason is on why they haven't spoken to him or given him an opportunity. My thing was it's either no callbacks or you give all of them an opportunity if they have performed locally, which yeah. Russell or Rousseau has done. Yeah. But even so, look at this, it's the same story. Yeah? Olafiero was there because of his stats in the four-day series, right? Mm -hmm. So Simon Armour, same story. Well, the overseas performance is definitely. Um, yeah, well, Rousseau's done well in the T20 knockout competition. Yeah. I mean, that's where the beginning of the, of the year they won it, his team, and it's largely because of his performances. Yeah. Um, he never necessarily saw a lot of game time. I, in the T20 challenge because he was playing overseas, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So we didn't get to see him there. But my problem is that I do think it's a little bit unfair if you're going to give other callbacks chances and then not explain why one of the best T20 players is not getting selected. Now, maybe it's because they they pigeonholed um, someone like, uh, not, not actually pigeonholed, sorry, they've, they've thought about someone like, Tristan Stubbs to be the future for South yeah. Africa. That big is um, something there. And, yeah. and, and perhaps that's why they don't. But Tristan only got selected now. Mm -hmm. So that I don't think that that necessarily can be the reason. There, has been, well, there was plenty of opportunities to pick mm -hmm. Riley and maybe even as a finisher. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, the other thing is that you must also look at age as well. How old is, how old is Riley at the moment? I don't even know, I think, about 35. Over 35. Same 35, as Russia, Rass I think. He's not 32. <laughs> what? Okay. It just so shows how early young. he signed that callback deal, eh? Yeah. So relatively young. But again, you've got the possibility of Stubbs. I think Stubbs is there to serve as a segue for when Miller eventually calls time. Because I think that's what's going to happen. Remember, Miller, as an example, has been here for 10 plus years. Right, so inevitably the guys that are playing IP will probably want to come in more time to it as they get older. So we have to look at look to the future. You have to look at the younger guys. So if it's Stubbs, if it's possibly Brevis, I think though there's clearly something that's in the woodworks as well, and even Riza as well. Mm -hmm. I think Lorenzo just mentioned Riza. Riza is also uh, yeah. not, as, not well, exactly spring chicken. <laughs> what he's trying to say over here actually is the lack of disrespect. Um, oh, he's, I think it's the lack of the respect he's saying Yanaman gets um, in T20 cricket is kind of shocking. The guy's boundary percentage rate is up there with the t top T20 cricketers in the world. It's someone like Riza no. is ahead of him. Okay. Yeah, so you see now with Yanaman Milan, uh, I've been very, very vigilant about his game, watching his game consistently. He plays a really good game with Quinton de Kock in, in ODI cricket because he's found a way to bat long and deep. So it gives Quinton that freedom to be able to play. I don't see him playing that style mm -hmm. in T20 cricket. I feel that in T20 cricket, he's more of a player that wants to attack immediately from the offset. So having two players like that, for me personally, that are both risky at losing their wickets up early, but playing that both attacking game, that's uh, I feel cautious about that, especially with the the fragile batting that we've seen from the protest in the past. That's why I want a kind of combination where there is someone that can keep his wicket because holding on to wickets is also very important. You don't want to just lose a flurry of wickets early and then you come into the tail early and then That's you it. can't get the past that 150 mark or 140 mark. You know, you don't want to get a situation like we did against Australia in the opening game where that happened. We lost players early and we didn't know how to recover. Yeah. So I want, I, I do like Yanaman Milan a lot as a player, and I think he's a very destructive batter. But for me, I think the dynamic between him and Quinn Lukaku, I, I don't see the dynamic to be perfect. Now, does it, if Yanaman Milan gets more game time with Quinton, do they get an opportunity to do so? Yes, they do. 
but I've seen them play for the Blitz, like I've said. Both of them have played for the entire season together as an opening pair, and I wasn't seeing the, the sparks that I thought I was going to see. Yeah. I wasn't seeing – it looked like they were almost both competing to play an attacking role. Now, I know that – and it's unfortunate that you have such a talented player like Quinton that you're building your, your style of play around almost because mm -hmm. you want to get the best out of him. And when he performs well, it takes pressure off the rest of the team. So, I mean, I suggested so long ago, what about maybe pushing Quinton down to four, you know, as a batter? Like – uh, that was something that I spoke about a couple of years ago, right? <laughs> I was and I, well, that was in case scripted that I was speaking about it. And then I was thinking maybe even as a as, as South Africa's best batter, but then you like you think about him as an opener, and you're like, you don't want to mess it up. Mm -hmm. You don't want to mess around with people when they are doing well yeah. as as already in the position that they have. Plus, so I know people are going to probably in the test team as well. Like uh, you know, he's batting, he's keeping. You know, do you really want him to? Carry the whole team with that, which he invariably ended up doing, even at six. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Lawrence is saying, oh, wait, let's just start with Neil first. Neil Falani is saying, Quinny, Temba, Rassi, Markram, Muller, Stabs, Klaas, and Dwayne, Pani, maybe. A role def definition clear from this series going on. Mm -hmm. Temba Wings is a fluid player in the top five and freedom for all. That's what an uh, actual professional cricketer is saying, guys, about. Mm. Um, it's, it's interesting to hear because I see I look at the fans perspective mm -hmm. of Timber and then I, I listen to players and I'm talking I'm not talking about what players are telling me when we're interviewing them no because you know sometimes they say things on an interview maybe or they'll say something in a press conference that is not 100% a true reflection of what they're really thinking mm -hmm. but when I spoke to a lot of his teammates before from the Lions and they've played with him before a lot of them have rated him as a T20 batter. So I don't understand why. I understand why there's a a lack of support for him in the T20 game because of the this idea that he has a slow strike rate, etc. Um, but I feel that the games that he has been playing, he doesn't really necessarily have a lot of T20 games on his belt either. So we haven't seen enough. Have we seen enough of Timber to judge him yet? So this particular series for me is so important for the future, for the World Cup preparation. Because this is going to determine... How are we going to set up going into that World Cup? Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping that we can get some clarity in this particular series. We're going to be tested by a very tough Indian team. I'm not going to underestimate well, them at all. Sure. Yeah. This team is this team could possibly be a, even a first team, but like that's how good they are. Like I think I think they're so talented. The majority of these players are like there's no first, second third, with, these... with the Indian T20 cricket. No not even a, a about chance. thirty guys that, that are probably vying for selection, really. In the grand mm -hmm. scheme of things. Ash, is saying that Babuma should play at the top. No other position is suited his game. Um Chatli, is that the Chatil? Is that Chatil. A, Chatil? Chatil. Forget England, take Australia for an example. They're going away from the Steve Smith now to add batsmen who keep going on with it. Not many anchors is Australia batting compared to previous years. Now I'm what is wrong with one anchor, though? You're really going to bring the anchor story into question. <laughs> That's so debatable. Um, but I agree, well, you should have more than one anchor. But there are people that believe T20 is a special game. And I don't think we should have one more than one anchor. But one anchor is fine, I think. If you have one batter that's taking it a little bit easy, like Timber Bobo, but I don't think he will take it completely easy. He has abilities to hit boundaries. Mm -hmm. And maybe he needs to just refocus on keeping it down and hitting in the gaps um, rather than trying to clear the ropes. Because whenever Bavuma tries to do that to prove a point, that's when he loses his wicket a lot. Um, we have three anchors though, Timba, Bavuma, Aiden Markram. And I don't see Aiden Markram as, a, as an anchor though. Do you see Aiden as an anchor? Not really, because I think he, again, he can play a semi-aggressive role. Um, he's found boundaries in field settings where they shouldn't have been around. You know, so Aiden's got that gift uh, to do that, and he just needs to exploit that more. Uh, I see him as a semi-aggressive uh, uh, batsman in the manner of speaking. A batter, sorry, not batsman. Hmm. Mo Markham starts slow and explodes unless he opens. Um, I was thinking that his rotation of strike may actually allow the rest of the lineup to flourish. 
by giving them a lot of the strike. You can pin him down. You can't pin him down. A run out can be scary. Um, Ashwani, he can play a semi-aggressive role, and that's why I see him as a middle order batter mm. because yep. it's dependable on what the situation is. Mark him is the person that can adapt. Yeah. Watch, watch his innings in the Sunrise Hyderabad. Okay, sure. They weren't the greatest innings, but in my opinion, he did the job, generally speaking. He broke them out of jail a few times as well. Yeah, so I don't necessarily see him as an anchor, me personally, like I'll say again. Um, yeah, me personally. So it's very rare. If we had a batter that was as attacking as Quinton, another one that can be as destructive, but is also adaptable, that would be the perfect partner for Quentin the Kaka field that has an ability to do both. Because if Quentin loses his wicket, he can turn it on. If Quentin is struggling, he can rotate the strike. If Quentin needs someone that can 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 match him, he can do that too. Yeah. So an, a versatile batter would be the best option. But currently, we don't necessarily have a versatile batter. I don't think they're going to throw Aiden, who is our most versatile batter in my opinion. In, as an opener suddenly if he's doing well for us in the middle mm -hmm. so for me at the moment i think it's more important for us to get the best out of Kony currently um Somebody this is previous to open <laughs> have you seen so so Diervald is an excellent batter and I, and I and i and i really enjoy watching him play but we saw in the ipl dot, dot balls coming in at three in that situation it's fine to have so many dot yeah. balls but as an opener i think that's going to be an issue they threw him in the deep end didn't they yeah yeah i'm um, so, okay so let's just see what bibik is saying over here um he says the team of should open in the series no matter what rashi should come in at three and aiden at four well as per the game stands markham starts changing his gear as he getting as he's getting confidence yeah. back yeah. i agree with that actually i like i like the thought of having david muller as the as as the situation unveils itself because i think when we lose a couple of wickets if we lose a couple of weeks and the over rate is slow i think the best option is probably to bring in someone like david uh, actually but but i think david and and aiden fight for that particular roles in the team yeah. um even though we want to see david at bat higher we've all said we want to see david bat higher i mean i've been a fan of david Miller probably batting higher um for a while, for, for a while now um so hopefully he can um he, we can do so but that's why this India series is going to be so important. I'm looking forward to the preview. Um, we play the first game on Thursday, I think. So I'm looking forward to the preview of this because we can discuss what we want to see um, going forward from a strategy perspective. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this opened up a nice little discussion, I think, um, with you guys. And I want to see what you guys have to say in the in the comment section, not in the live chat, but in the comment section after the afterwards. It's very important that you comment after this video too, guys. It will really help us out. If you can just spare a couple of minutes just to comment on the video afterwards what your thoughts were after watching the show, that I would really, really, really appreciate that. Also, smash the like button, please, guys. Very important that you do so. That's how we get into algorithms. Um, also, you can share this with many people as well as subscribe and click that notification bell. Also, become a patron today. Link is on the screen as well as in the description. You can also donate a, pa a PayPal to myself as well. The, the link is in the description as well. You can donate to me over there if you do guys want to. That's a better preferred paying option that you guys feel. And then on top of that, you need to download Cricket Fanatics Magazine monthly. Every issue is 100% free. Straight to your inbox every single month. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. So please go ahead and follow us there. You'll get amazing insight and content from so many players and so many coaches, etc. This man over here wrote the cover story for last month's issue on the club cricket issue. Um, actually, sorry, for the previous issue. Sorry, the previous issue on the on, um, both Keshav. That was uh, Ravi's one, so go check that out. He wrote the, the cover story for that one. Last comment over here, you can't get 220 with more than one anchor, but chances of consistent 200s without an anchor are slim. You need one, Temba or Riza, and everyone else bats for team target based on the weekend. Fair it's fair a great point. way to end the stream. Fair point. Um, when there would be sh um, some um, Patreon show, we're trying to get about 20 Patreons. Once we get 20 Patreons, we will be doing exclusive shows for the Patreons alone. So go ahead and become Patreons today, guys, so we can speed up the process because we want to do them as soon as possible. Thanks a lot for watching.
Ravi, shot for coming. We're going to go now and, and, and go out and have some supper together. And we'll see you guys again on the flip side. We'll see you again tomorrow with another daily show. Take care, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Peace. Thank you.